So Maverick and I got the Adventure Challenge book for couples a few years ago, and every now and then we'll pull it out and we'll do a date. Recently, we ended up with the prompt to create a comic strip of our love story and write the captions in Chinese. <laughs> now, I fully understand that this is supposed to just be a cute, funny, silly way to hang out with your significant other and reflect on your good times together. and. Yeah, but I am an artist and as such, I really didn't want to just draw little stick figures and leave it at that. And so I took this opportunity instead to explore uh, my little ambitions from when I was a sixth grader and I wanted to be a cartoonist and um, also to share an abridged version of our love story here on my channel. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. Maverick and I were married in 2021, but our story started long ago at the tender age of 16. We went to different schools, but my sister had just started dating one of his friends and they insisted that we should meet. So one Sunday I joined them at Maverick's youth group where he was playing guitar and I immediately thought he was super cute. So after the service, my sister's boyfriend introduces us, but allow me to set the scene first. I had braces, acne, and a perm I did not know how to style. I wasn't brimming with confidence, but I guess I have always just been a romantic and I wouldn't have admitted it at the time, but I was really hopeful and hoping to have a whole like main character thing going on and just be like so different from the other girls who I assumed were chasing him all the time. But what really happened was he gave me a very weak handshake, which I later teased him for a lot. And then I made a feeble attempt at being funny, which failed as well. And that was really it. Maverick has told me since that he actually didn't know that we were going to be introduced that night and he was totally blindsided and a little bit nervous and just didn't know what to say. And even though I remember being in the throes of the geekiest look of my life, he says that all he remembers was this beautiful girl talking to him. He doesn't remember my stupid jokes and he would have forgotten that night altogether if my sister's boyfriend hadn't insisted to me that I should reach out. He told me Maverick was shy and didn't really talk to girls and so he might need a little push. That wasn't really my style, but I honestly just thought he was so cute. So against all precedents, rules, and better judgments, I sent the first Facebook message. I've been told he likes Switchfoot and so I asked him, as an authority on the matter, which of their songs was the best because I just couldn't agree with anyone. Never mind that I had never asked anyone else before, but I guess the important thing was it started a conversation, which grew into larger and longer messages over the course of the next two years. These messages became like two to three long messages a week, spanning the gamut from crazy made up stories to deep theological conversations. It was honestly awesome. And naturally I developed a huge crush on him. However, we only saw each other a total of like three times, only two of which were intentional. He had decided not to date anyone in high school, and while I started out with the same mindset, the romantic in me eventually caved and I started dating a guy senior year when it was clear to me that nothing was ever going to happen with Maverick. There were times I would think he was going to make a move, but then the subject would always change and we would just never crack that ice. He told me years later how close he came to saying something, but he just didn't want to start something that he didn't think we would be able to keep up after high school. From my perspective, however, I just believed if he had feelings and wanted to do something about them, he would have. And so we stayed in the friend zone. But the clock was ticking, and as we got closer to graduating, the time between our messages grew longer and longer until we went off to college and essentially let each other off the hook indefinitely. When this happened, I guess I figured that Maverick was just the type of guy that was out of my league. The bar was set and I just had to aim under it. <laughs> the crazy thing is that I had set the bar for him too, but according to him, a girl would have to be as good as me or better for him to even bother pursuing her. Clearly, neither of us had any idea what an impact we had made on each other. So I guess that leads us nicely into the TLDR version of the next decade where I went to art school, became a teacher, dated a couple of not so great guys, and had one long and unhealthy relationship. Meanwhile, Maverick also went to school, worked hard, and just traveled as much as he could, enjoyed his life, and didn't date anyone. Over the years, of course, I still wondered about him. I wondered what he was up to, if he ever got married, but especially if he was still the guy I remembered from those messages back in high school. It didn't really matter though, because that ship had sailed, 
and it wasn't coming back. However, after almost 10 years of doing life on our own, he came back into my life in a way that could only be God. There are so many cool details about the way we reconnected and I could not possibly share them all here, but I will tell you one of my favorites. I don't know if you believe dreams ever mean anything, but I do. And I know sometimes your brain is just working something out or you had some bad pizza the night before, but sometimes I do think God will show us things through dreams. It was early January of 2020 and Maverick and I hadn't seen each other or spoken for the better part of a decade. One night I had a dream about him and I don't really remember much of what happened in the dream, but I do remember where he was. He was somewhere in Asia. It kind of looked like Japan, but that was all. And then I woke up and I asked the Lord where the heck that came from. And he just started giving me things, laying things on my heart to just pray over him. And so I did. But I called my sister the next morning, the one whose boyfriend, now husband, had introduced us back in 2009, and I asked her what she thought I should do, if anything at all. Wisely, she told me not to do anything about it right now, but just pray and wait and just see what happens. So I just kept doing that and I went about my business. However, (laughs) the next day, she calls me and she goes, um, excuse me, did you reach out to him after we talked and said you wouldn't? And of course, I'm like, no, I didn't. And she goes, well, he hasn't talked to my husband in nine years. And he just messaged him out of the blue. And now they're going to hang out next month. I honestly, y'all, I cannot tell you how stunned I was. After almost a decade of radio silence, I have a dream about this guy, say a prayer. And at the same time, he decides to just reach out to his old buddy on LinkedIn, who happens to be married to my sister. You may say it's coincidence. But that's just one of many things like that in our story, and I know they're just puzzle pieces in this testimony. Oh, did I mention he was in Japan when I had that dream? So the next month, he and my brother-in-law met up for dinner, and he ended up telling him about how he'd always had a thing for me and how no other girl quite measured up. He said he'd always regretted not doing anything about the way he felt. He said his family and close friends knew me as Facebook girl. (laughs) My brother-in-law also knew that for me, Maverick was the one that got away. So he encouraged him to reach out. One week later, he did. Two weeks after that, we saw each other for the first time in 10 years. I wore the red sun dress I drew in the previous frame. It took us an hour to order our food because we were talking so much. And for seven hours, we didn't run out of a single thing to say. By the end of the date, I knew what my mom had always told me was true. When you know, you know. I still needed time though, as I was still healing and learning from my previous breakup, but he was patient and loving and kind, and he pursued me with that patience and has loved me so well every day since. That date was March 13th, 2020. Exactly 11 months later, we got married after a two week engagement and had only our family there. It was perfect. Two years later, I had our son, And so instead of a dead fish handshake, I am handing our baby over to Maverick because of all of those years have come to this. We are so blessed and so happy and God has been so merciful to us. And this is truly just a tiny glimpse of the redemption of this love story that almost never was, but was actually just waiting for the right time to unfold. I hope you can see how intentional God is when you truly trust him to write your story. Thank you for being here and listening to my story. I'll see you next time.